So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, at least uh, most of this uh, course. I will talk about uh, Poisson free groups. Uh, so this theory was developed uh, in uh, the first half of the 1980s. Uh, the notion of Poisson group was uh, uh, introduced uh, by Grinfeld based on the ideas from St. Peter's for school, uh, with Padet and his collaborator, uh, alongside with the theory of wine groups, uh, which is a quantization of this theory. And uh, this has many applications. Uh, theory of one groups is certainly one of the most important ones, but there are other applications, for example, integral systems. Uh, uh, you can use it to construct uh, symplectic and Poisson structures in various spaces like these uh, moduli spaces that were discussed uh, this morning. Uh, you can uh, uh, use Poisson link groups to define symplectic structure and uh, study them, and so on. Uh, so, let me start with the definition. The definition is very simple. So, a Poisson group uh, is a legal G uh, with a Poisson bracket. such that the multiplication map M from G cross G is uh, Poisson. We are, uh, I should explain what is the Poisson structure on uh, the product G cross G. Well, in general, it's because two Poisson manifolds, X and Y, the next cross Y is naturally a Poisson manifold. We just take the, the Poisson bivector of x, uh, make it independent of y, and the Poisson bivector of y make it independent of x, and just take the sum. So that's what it is. That's the only thing you can come up with. And with respect to that, this m uh, should be a Poisson map in the sense that Emma uh, used this term in the previous lecture. Poisson map, Poisson map. And uh, I'm going to work with the setting of real D groups, but the same definition uh, can be used for other types of D groups that are used in mathematics, in particular for complex D groups, for uh, algebraic groups. Uh, and then you can work over any field, in particular a field of positive characteristics or formal groups. <coughs> you know what that means. Uh, so let's uh, say more explicitly what this means. This means that uh, if you have two functions, f and g, uh, on your group, uh, this means that if I want to compute the Poisson bracket f and g, at a point which is x times y, where x and y are elements of g, then uh, this is a sum of two terms. First, I compute the bracket with respect to x, keeping y fixed. So that means I keep y fixed and view f and g as functions of x. So I'm going to write that as f g sub x of x, y. And then the same thing with y, fg sub y. So that means that I'm keeping x fixed and compute Poisson bracket with respect to y. So that's all it means that this map is Poisson. Because as I said, the Poisson bivector on g cross g is uh, just the sum of the Poisson bivector of the first factor extended to be independent of the second factor and 
the Poisson bimetal, the second factor, is tended to be independent of the argument here. So it's an easy exercise to check that that's the explicit form of this definition. Uh, and, uh, and you can write that in terms of Poisson by vector. So let me call that by vector pi. Uh, so that's a Poisson by vector on G, which determines the Poisson bracket. Uh, so this equation can be written in a very simple form, which I would write like that. Pi of x, y is equal to uh, uh, pi x times y plus uh, x times pi of y. That's a very short way of writing it, but it's very simple and clear. And what it means is that if you want to compute your by vector field, pi. So our G is a pre group, in particular, it's, it's a manifold, and it has a tangent bundle, so we can talk about by vector fields. And, uh, and also, on uh, vector fields and by vector fields uh, on G, we have uh, the operation of left and right translations by elements of the group. And so uh, this tells us that if I want to compute uh, the by vector pi at the point x times y, this is just uh, pi of x shifted on the right, right by right translation by y, plus uh, pi of y shifted by left translation by x. So that's, uh, that's what it means. And that's exactly what this equation means. So it's even simpler in this form. Yes. Hmm? Yeah, we will show that uh, this will be the first proposition. That we'll, if, if this condition is satisfied, we will show that the inversion map is actually anti-Poisson, which means it opposes the sign of Poisson. Okay, so, I mean, formally speaking, this, uh, this x is uh, not the right translation itself, but the differential of this right translation, left translation, sorry. And uh, in fact, not just the differential, but tensor square of the differential because it's supposed to act not on vector fields, but on y vector fields. And I could have written that here, but, for the, uh, but it is much simpler to write it in this way, and it's clear enough. OK. Uh, so, uh, and in particular, uh, I can set x and y to be the identity element. And then I get that pi of e equals to pi of e plus pi of e, which implies that pi of e equals to zero. So we see that if we have a Poisson e group, then the Poisson by vector vanishes at the origin. So the origin, the, at the identity element. So the identity element is a zero of the Poisson bracket, which means by itself it constitutes a symplectic leaf of the symplectic foliation that Eva talked about just now. There are other symplectic leaves which would be much bigger, but there is at least one symplectic leaf which is just one point, which is the identity error. Okay, uh, so, uh, and uh, Poisson uh, leaf groups form a category. Poisson manifold with the same Poisson bracket with the minus sign. 
And uh, this means that it's a Poisson map between G and the opposite of G. So that means uh, I upper star of Poisson bracket FG is minus I upper star of F with I upper star of G. And so how to prove that? Well, again, we're going to use this equation here. So we're going to uh, set y equals to x inverse. And so what do we get? We get on the left-hand side, we get pi of x, x inverse. So it's pi of e, which is 0. And on the right, we get pi of x times x inverse plus uh, x times pi of x inverse. And so this implies that pi of x inverse is equal to minus x inverse pi of x times x inverse. <laughs> and, uh, and that exactly means that this map is anti-Poisson. Because uh, let's, uh, let's so, so it turns out, so, so what is uh, the differential? So to, to show that some map is anti-Poisson, we need to see how its differential acts on the Poisson bread. And what is the differential of the inversion map? So at the point S, if we differentiate I, well, I, I claim that this is minus uh, the left uh, translation by x inverse lower star, which means the differential of left translation by x inverse composed with uh, the right uh, translation by x lower star, uh, with x inverse also, lower star. So, so these are uh, left and right translations. And uh, well, this is a kind of fancy formula, but all it says is that if you want to take, uh, if you have a curve x of t uh, uh, in some non-abelian Lie group, for example, in general non-abelian Lie group, and you want to take the derivative by t of the inverse of that thing, then it is simply minus x of t inverse x prime of t times x of t inverse. So you need to take minus the derivative and put uh, x inverses on both sides. So this formula is well known from calculus, so you can check it. And that's exactly what this is saying. And that's, uh, that's why this formula really means that this map is anti -close. So you can check this and I emphasize the details. Any questions? All right. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is I want to, uh, well, in Lie theory, what the main tool uh, of studying Lie groups is to pass from a Lie group to a Lie algebra, which is the linearization of a Lie group. So it turns out that a lot of the structure of the Lie group, which is nonlinear, can be captured by Lie algebra, which is a linear <coughs> And so, Poisson Lie group is a Lie group with an additional structure. So we want to see what that structure induces on the Lie algebra. And because we know that by uh, theorem of Lie, by the main theorem of Lie theory, uh, Lie groups and Lie algebras is the same thing as long as you consider simply connected Lie groups. Uh, so that means that any structure on the Lie group should be translatable. You can reformulate it in terms of the Lie, the Lie algebra. And that will should become simpler because it is linear. And indeed, that's possible, and that's uh, the notion of Lie by algebra. So that's what I'm going to explain. Uh, but uh, 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 to, to explain that, I will first go to the more general setting of Poisson map. So uh, we saw this uh, important fact that indeed we have a point, namely the identity, where the Poisson bracket is zero. And, and actually, uh, points with that property on Poisson manifold sign form. For example, we just saw the Weinstein normal form theorem, which says that in some sense, uh, locally, any Poisson manifold reduces to such situation, namely such situation times a symplectic space uh, up to a different form. And so, uh, but uh, so uh, the, this is a question: What is the local model? So Darboux theorem tells us that if you have a non-degenerate Poisson structure, which means symplectic structure, near some point, 
Then there is only one such structure, namely the constant coefficients in vector form, and that's the, what they're used here. Now, the opposite case is when it's completely degenerate at that point, and the Poisson bracket vanishes. It, it turns out that in that case, when we know an example of such situation, the main example is the dual of a Lie algebra. Then the Poisson bracket vanishes in the neighborhood of zero. Or zero. And it turns out that uh, any Poisson manifold uh, with a zero of Poisson bracket is modeled by that, in a weak sense, which means it's not true that, that it's really equivalent in some coordinates to that. But it's only true that it's true that up to quadratic terms it, it's so. And that's very easy to see. So that's what I'm going to explain. So suppose you have X, which is a Poisson manifold, and you have a point E, and the Poisson bracket at this point is zero. Well, in this case, I claim that the cotangent space of X at that point has a Lie algebra structure. Why is that the case? Well, we have the ideal in functions on X. So this is ideal of functions vanishing at E. And uh, the Poisson bracket, in this situation, when the Poisson bracket at E vanishes, lands in, e, in, in this ideal. And in particular, it defines a pairing I cross I to I. So I becomes a real for such a manifold. Uh, and, uh, and moreover, I square, which is functions that vanish of E to second order, is a Lie ideal in I. Which, by which I mean that bracket of I with I squared is contained in I squared. Well, it's true by the Leibniz rule, because if you have a I square is a span of products of elements of I, so when you uh, Poisson bracket something with a product, you break it with the first thing plus break it with the second thing, and uh, each term easily seems by the line I squared. So this implies that I over I squared, which is the standard definition of the quotient space, uh, is a Lie So that means the Poisson, in the first approximation, a Poisson manifold near a point where the Poisson bracket is zero looks like a Lie And in particular, this implies that if I take uh, a Poisson equal G and I take its Lie algebra, uh, then the dual G star of this G is just by definition in B theory the tangent space of the identity of the group. So G star is the quotient space of the identity of the group. And this is also a Lie algebra. So we see that if we have a Poisson Lie group G, not, then not only its Lie algebra G is a Lie algebra, but actually the dual space of G is also a Lie algebra. And, uh, uh, well, we can rewrite that as a structure of G. So we, we have the bracket map from uh, uh, wedge 2 of uh, uh, G uh, dual to G dual. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a skew symmetric bracket. And uh, we can dualize this map. And the dual of wedge 2 of uh, G star is wedge 2 of G. And so what we get is uh, uh, the map delta from G to wedge 2 of G which is called the co-break or the co-commutator because it is dual to break or commutator. And so what properties does it have? Well, first of all, well, the bracket satisfies the Jacobian identity. So uh, this should translate into a certain property of the co-break. So what would that property be? Well, it's easy to write it down. So the Jacobi identity for the bracket gives rise to what is called the core Jacobi uh, for delta. And this core Jacobi for delta is, well, 
well, how do we rate your copy? We iterate and rank it twice. And, uh, and then we, we uh, sum over the cyclic permutations and say that that is zero. So similarly here, we should iterate the co-bracket twice. So we should take delta that takes us from g to uh, wave 2 of g. And, and then we can uh, apply delta to the first component. So this is going to be in uh, g, tensor g, tensor g. And then we alternate that. And this is supposed to be zero. Where alt is the sum or safety permutation. So if we have alt of a cross b cross c, this is supposed to be a cross b cross c plus b cross c cross a plus c cross a cross b. So that's uh, the pro uh, the project coding. Uh, but actually, that's not it. There is also uh, another property. But before I explain this other property, which is compatibility between bracket and co-bracket, let me uh, make a definition. Uh, a Lee algebra is a vector space G with uh, a map, linear map, delta from G to H2 of G, uh, which satisfies quadrant formulae. So we have seen that uh, this G, which is the Lie algebra of G, which is a Poisson Lie group, then uh, G is a Lie algebra and Lie form. But, uh, but actually, that's not it. And there is another property which is compatibility. Before I explain this property, any questions? Yes. This thing, yeah. Uh, well, maybe I should put it off X, where X is a uh, G. Yes? So usually when you have a bracket on G and you realize it to a differential G star, the equivalent condition is D squared to be zero, like the Chevalier algorithm differential. Why is in this case so much more complicated? Uh, no, well, uh, I mean, it's it's not more complicated. It's uh, it's just a way to write a dual condition. And when you say, uh, uh, I, I mean, when you define uh, the Chevalier differential. Uh, so then you use a bracket. So you use both the bracket and the map D, which is in, on one point chains, is the dual of the bracket. In this condition, you use only the dual of the bracket. So that's why it's a little different. Well, I think isn't it just the same? It's the same condition. It is the same condition if you rewrite it uh, using only the dual of the bracket. So, uh, so here is a proposition. Uh, so delta satisfies the following condition. The delta of the commutator of two of those things is equal to uh, uh, a cross 1 plus 1 cross a with delta of b plus delta of a, 1 cross b plus, uh, well, b cross 1 plus 1 plus b. So you, you can think of this one line in the universal enveloping algebra, if you like. Right. I mean, this just means a cross 1 with delta of b just means that you bracket a with the second, uh, with the first component of delta of b, which lies in wage 2 
Okay, so let me uh, give you a proof. Uh, so for the proof, you uh, 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 well, this pi, the uh, pi vector defining the Poisson bracket, is a section of the wedge two of the quotient bundle. So the quotient bundle of the Lie group is a, a non-trivial uh, vector bundle. Uh, sorry, tangent bundle. The wedge two of the tangent bundle. Tangent bundle of a Lie group is a, a non-trivial bundle, but it is trivializable. We can trivialize it in two different ways. One is by right translations and the other by left translations. Well, let's choose one of them. Let's, let's trivialize it, let's say, by right translations. So, uh, so trivialize the uh, tangent bundle of T by right translations. And in this, uh, well, this is, uh, yeah. will allow us to treat uh, this section of this uh, vector bundle, I should say, section of this vector bundle as a function with values in wage 2 of g. Then, uh, so that means that we pass from phi of x to phi of x times x inverse, which means we return this phi of x back to the identity. Uh, and, and this is just an element of wage 2 of g. Uh, so I'm going to call it lowercase pi. And uh, so this pi is a, a map from the 2g to h2g. This is just a function, vector valued function. And so it's convenient to work with this lowercase pi. So what does the equation uh, here become? Well, to uh, rewrite this equation, we just need to multiply by y inverse x inverse on the right. So we get phi of x y, y inverse x inverse, equals to phi of x, y, y inverse x inverse, so that's just x inverse, plus uh, x phi of y, x inverse, uh, <coughs> y inverse x inverse. And so, uh, uh, so this equation, I can rewrite it in terms of lowercase phi, is pi lowercase of x y is equal to pi of x plus a joint of x conjugation by x times pi of y, where this is really a tensor square of a joint of x, tensor square of the a joint of the of x acting with the linear algebra. But I will write it simplified in the simplified form like this. So that's the equation that I have. Phi of x y equals to phi of x plus a joint of x times phi of y. And uh, similarly, I can write that the same equation for phi of y x. Why am I doing that? Well, if you want to pass the Lie algebra from a Lie group, what you have to do is you have to consider the difference between x y and y x. And that's why, because Lie algebra measures the non-commutativity of the group. So that's why I'm doing that. And so what you get is pi of y uh, plus a joint of y, pi of s. Uh, and so, uh, so now I'm going to take uh, Uh, no, 
it's not, but, but we can do it this way, it's simpler. I mean, we can, uh, so we can say that x, y is equal to y, x times exponential of t squared times the commutator plus blah, blah, blah. All right, so uh, we subtract. And, uh, well, these differ by exponential of t squared times spread plus uh, t cubed times something. So uh, the t squared coefficient will be the differential of pi at the identity of the bread. But let's note that the differential of pi at the identity equals to delta by definition. Because that's exactly how we define delta. Delta was uh, what, uh, so we look at the uh, uh, Lie algebra structure on this idea of i. And if we want to look at the first order approximation, which means what it does on i over i squared, then it's exactly the uh, differential of pi at the identity. Uh, so that means that on the left hand side, we're going to get delta of the commutator a. So what are we going to get on the right hand side? Well, the quadratic term that we're going to get, well, we're going to get this minus this. So, uh, so, so, so you can easily calculate what you get. Uh, well, from here, from f x, you're going to get a, but it will be a joint operator in the Lie algebra sense. And it acts on delta of v. So you're going to get delta of v from the differential of pi at e again, yeah? because y goes to 0. But y goes to e when t goes to 0. Uh, so this will come with a coefficient t. And this will come with a coefficient t. So that together it's going to be t squared. Yes? <laughs> So you can check that first order contributions will all cancel. And from the second order contribution, you're going to get exactly this. These are going to be the remaining ones. So you expand this by Taylor's formula in T. And what you will get is that the first order contributions will be on both sides will be the same. They will give not give us the complete condition. The second order contributions will give the equation that I'm writing. So this is an exercise. No, there are also first order contributions. But, it, okay, so, so this is the first derivative of this. And this is the first derivative of this. So that's a quadratic contribution. Well, we will get this minus this. So we will get a joint x minus identity. So that has order t. And the leading coefficient is this. And pi also has order t. So maybe I should write. No, 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 you, you get the, the following thing. Pi of x, y minus pi, and then I use this formula. Uh, well, maybe pi, pi of y, x, exponential of t squared a, b plus log minus pi of y, x. But this is x, y. And uh, this is clearly of order t squared. And uh, the t-squared contributions will just be, uh, well, the bracket goes down, and, and then uh, here we just have to take the limit when t goes to 0. Okay. okay, and so uh, so here, uh, from, the combi from combining these two terms, you're going to get a joint of a times delta of b. And from combining these two terms, you will get uh, uh, minus a joint of b times delta of a. We are joint really x on the wedge 2, but, uh, but I'm writing it sh uh, in a shortened way like this. And that's exactly the same equation as, as this. Except that in this term, I switched uh, the uh, things inside the commutator and changed the sign. 
Yes. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm going to say next. Yeah. <coughs> Any questions about this? Uh, okay. So, uh, so here is a definition. So now we see that we have these conditions, and here is the definition. Y, 
which is 0, 1, 0, 0. And x bracket y equals y. So what are the three bi-algebra structures on this thing? Well, so what would the leap of bracket wing be? So if delta from g to wedge to g, so delta of uh, x, so, so this is a uh, one dimensional and it is spanned by a x wedge y because g is two dimensional. So delta of x is uh, some constant alpha x wedge y and delta of y is beta x wedge y. Uh, and uh, so the question is, are the axioms satisfied? So, uh, well, uh, it's clear that uh, Kojakobi is automatic. Because Kojakobi uh, takes values in wave 3 of G. This is alternating. Uh, but uh, what about compatibility condition? And it turns out it's also automatic. This is less obvious, but it can be easily checked. So this is an easy exercise. It takes uh, half a line to, to the computation. And, and so we get this uh, uh, Levi algebra, which I'm going to call B alpha B. Uh, and uh, one can show that the B alpha beta is isomorphic, uh, so this is an exercise. Uh, B alpha beta uh, is isomorphic uh, to uh, B zero beta.
And, uh, and note that there is, a, so if I take uh, subalgebras generated by H and E, or H and F, uh, then these are, these B, uh, 0 and plus minus 1. So this rescale family, when you take the subalgebra generated by H and E, is this thing. Okay. Uh, any questions? We'll consider other examples. For example, it turns out that every single Lie algebra has a uh, very nice, uh, uh, what is called standard Lie by algebra structure, which comes from one of group theory, uh, and which we'll discuss a little bit. All right. So. Now, self-duality. So, uh, here is the proposition. If uh, G bracket and delta, <coughs> so remember bracket for a Levi algebra is a map from wedge 2 G to G, and delta is a map the other way, G wedge 2 G. So, uh, if we dualize, then so this is a Levi algebra, Well, if you look at G dual, let's say finite dimensional Lie algebra. Well, if it's finite dimensional, we can dualize these maps. So we can use delta dual as a bracket. It's going to go from uh, uh, wedge 2 of G star to G star. And then we can take the dual of the bracket as the full bracket. And the claim is this is also a Lie So the gain of Lie by algebra is uh, Lie by algebra is anti-equivalent to itself. And the proof is uh, uh, very simple. So uh, the Jacobi identity for the bracket under this dualization is clearly exchanged with the co-Jacobi. Because co-Jacobi was defined as the dual of Jacobi. And the only question is whether the Compatibility condition is self dual. If you write it in this way, it's not completely clear. But actually, this is a situation which is a sweet. This is something that's especially nice to show by using P. So, in general, in the theory of the algebra, C by algebra, and so on, the calculus of the whole picture of triangle and graphs is very useful. And this is a one instance. Well, it's easy to show algebraically also, but it's immediate if you use pictures. So, use pictures. You use this picture for the bracket, and this picture for the co-bracket. Then, uh, what is delta of uh, uh, of the bracket? Well, that means that we first bracket two things, and then co-bracket what we get. So that's the picture of delta of the commutator. Well, let's write down the terms of this sum. Well, what is a cross 1 with delta of Well, that means that we compute the delta of the second component. So let me draw it this way. The same thing as this, just a slightly different way of writing it. And then we have to bracket a. a is the thing that comes from the top. So this is a and this is b. And we have to bracket this uh, uh, first uh, thing with delta. So that means that we have to do this. So that's, uh, that, that, that's uh, the first. Now let's do the second term. The second term means that we do the same thing, but then commute with A the second component. So that's the thing. And it doesn't matter whether I draw overcrossing or undercrossing. In this business, it's not important. Then, B delta of A with, with B cross 1. So that means that, that I do delta of A like that. And, and then um, I, I cross uh, with B. So it's like this. And then, uh, uh, delta of a, of a with 1 cross b, it's, it's this. 
Okay? And now it stays clear that uh, this is self dual because when you dualize, this thing goes to itself, and this thing goes to itself, and these two things get exchanged. So this, this shows, and this thing goes to itself. So that means that this equation is self-dual, because dualization just corresponds to putting a mirror and mirror imaging this thing. So that's a proof. <laughs> that's, a, that's actually a rigorous proof. It's just a replacement of a local calculation, uh, which, which is much more, uh, which, this is just a way of writing down that algebraic proposition. Any questions about that? So I started a few minutes late, so I will continue for another few minutes, and then we will have the question. All right. Uh, so here is a. So now I want to talk about the main theorem of Poisson Lee theory. So remember, I already mentioned the main theorem of Lee theory says that the category of simply connected Lee group is equivalent to the category of Lee algebra, of finite dimensional Lie algebra. The quantum uh, uh, G goes over to the Lie algebra G is an equivalent uh, from the case pair of Lie groups to the case pair of finite dimensional Lie algebra. Uh, and um, this is not an, a trivial theorem. This is a pretty difficult theorem. And the most difficult part of this theorem is to, to prove that any finite dimensional Lie algebra is the Lie algebra of some Lie. So, uh, and, uh, but in Poisson Lie theorem, there is also a side theorem which is due to Grinfeld, and which says, that the functor G goes to Lie G. Uh, uh, yeah, I should say simply connected Lie G. Simply connected. That's important. The functor G goes to Lie G is an equivalence from simply connected plus only groups to finite dimensional Lie prime. So this is simply connected to us on the group, so this is finite dimensional Lie by action. And this is, uh, this is true in the stating over the real numbers and over the complex numbers uh, and in a formal case uh, over a field of characteristics zero. So similarly to the theorem of E. Theorem of E is true in these settings and it is not true for algebraic groups. Because not any real finite dimensional Lie algebra is the algebra of an algebraic group. But in the other settings, it's true. And in the formal setting and characteristic zero, this is something that reduces to the campbell hausdorff series, which is a non-trivial but fairly combinatorial business. But uh, in the analytic setting, you also have to show that that series converges, and that's a much uh, more serious uh, analytic uh, task. But uh, this was done a long time ago. OK. Uh, so, uh, so that's the theorem, and uh, I will want to discuss the proof of this theorem after the break. Any questions about the formulation? So, what do we actually need to prove? So, to prove that some functor is an equivalence of categories, you have to show that it is essentially surjective, which means every object is obtained in the target category. And uh, also that it is fully faithful, which means that home, that on the home, on the home spaces, uh, 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 this map is an isomorphism. Uh, and uh, the second statement is easy. So, uh, so, so the map home from G1, G2, for some reasons, to home, uh, well, simply connect for some reasons. Uh, in Lie by algebra of G1, G2 is an isomorphism, uh, is easy. 
So basically, uh, what you have to show that, uh, uh, well, I mean, if, if here you get a zero map, then here everything has to map to one, and it's not very hard. Well, anyway, if it's this map is a restriction of the map for usual equals, and uh, therefore it is injected. And then if you have a Lie algebra map here, then the construction of the Poisson Lie group, uh, the, well, if you exponentiate this map and make it a Lie group map, which you can do by Lie theorem, it is easy to prove that that map is going to preserve Poisson vector. So, so that's straightforward. So the most difficult part of this theorem, so maybe I should say that this is an exercise, and the, the, the most interesting part, interesting part, is uh, to show that any Lie algebra is, uh, D, is of the form Lie G for a simply connected many finite dimensional Lie algebra of a real, so complex numbers, uh, is uh, of the form uh, Lie G for a simply connected uh, Lie group. The Poisson Lie group. And then it will be unique by this part, which is easy. And this is something that I will do after the break. So I will explain how to prove this theorem. Because it turns out that it is not very difficult to do, because we already, everything difficult was done already by me. Or by whoever proved this theorem. I don't know if he gave a complete rigorous proof of this theorem. But um, uh, uh, all we will have to do uh, what, uh, what Yvette uh, mentioned that uh, uh, in fact this condition can be interpreted as a condition that delta is a one plus cycle and some homology of it. And then we will show that one plus cycles can be integrated to the And that's actually very easy because we can interpret one plus cycles as homomorphs. Uh, well, we can, yeah, so we can relate one plus cycles to homomorphisms and the fact that we can integrate homomorphisms is already proved in this theory. So I'll do that after the break. Any questions? Yes. Uh, it's uh, it depends on 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 your point of view. Uh, so so let me. Uh, how many sets of five elements are there? If you say one, then I will say it's an isomorphism. If you say infinitely many, I will say it's an equivalent. Uh, yeah, but it's. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's. But. It's also important to, to say that if I have two Poisson Lie groups which give the same Lie by algebra, then they also have to be the same. And I can only prove that they are isomorphic. So, I, but I don't want to deal with this question because usually this type of question is not important. Okay, other questions? 